So I've got our box lid on top of some tubs here just to get it up off the surface. I'm, I'm dampening this pretty significantly um, because it's very warm and and um, and dry in my in my studio right now. So then that's bad. We definitely want um, uh, a little bit higher humidity, a little bit lower temperature. It's just the situation right now. I can't really be helped at the moment. Anyway, my glaze mix, uh, the details of which are in the ebook, uh, you'll see a link to that. So I'm stretching. I'm stretching the glaze uh, lengthwise, and it doesn't matter. You could do it either way, but it just needs to all end in one direction. Then you're going to soften with your blending brush. Oh, the, by the way, this is the Da Vinci Spalter. Um, soften with the blending brush in the opposite direction of those brush marks that I applied with the spalter. And I'm going to work kind of quick here. Normally I might soften this a little more, but because it's dry and, and uh, warm in here, I want to get this done. Um, and that would happen, by the way, with acrylic glaze or oil glaze if your temperatures aren't quite um, ideal. So I've pleated, uh, I've uh, pleated and folded over and twisted this rag, and I'm going to remove a significant amount of the glaze because this is our undertone. I'm just looking for a cloudy base on which I'm going to work to create the rest of this project. And as you can see, I've removed quite a bit of glaze. Now I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh, and soften quite a bit, pretty aggressively. I'm getting my my bristles in there. Again, I want to remove. I removed quite a bit of glaze. I wanted a lot of light spots. And now I'm using the, just the tips of the brush to work out the tool marks because I don't want any hard edges. I want a cloudy, subtle undulation of color. And I'm actually going to remove just a little more glaze. I, I can maybe get away with this once more at this temperature. It's, it's over 75 or so in here right now. and That's a little warm. But, um, and you can fix that with more water or, um, but I've got studio lights going and stuff. So, so that's partially why. So I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that good. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay with that as my, for, as my undertone for my figured maple. We're going to be using these shapes as guides for grain lines and for the final figure step. And now that my top is done here, I, I'm going to have to clean up these edges because I think I want to do the, the sides. See, because when in applying this glaze, there would be, there would be some overlap here. I think I want to do these sides separately. So I'm going to go ahead and wait till this top dries. I'm not in a, I'm not in a hurry, uh, but I, I need to clean this up first. I can't let this dry with this slop on here, as you can see. That would be that would be bad, and I want as clean a look as I can get. And there's nothing wrong with having a kind of delineation between the top and the ends and sides of this piece. Um, if this were had been if this were a piece of real maple that had been assembled by a carpenter. Um, he would have, he would have had jo joinery between the sides and the top anyway. So, so actually having a little bit of a line between between end, ends and and uh, sides and top will add slightly to the realism. It's funny how that works uh, with with some of these things. That came out really nice. I'm happy with that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this dry and then I'm going to do I'm going to do the the sides and the ends. And what I'll do for that process is I'll set this I'll set the top on the base and do sides and ends all at the same time so I have continuity of look in this this uh, undertone layer. Um, well the undertone layer through this through the split in the boxes here in the box top and, and bottom so 
I hope I got that idea across. Anyway, that's next. dry box top here with the undertone, uh, my glaze and my number zero liner. I'm going to more or less follow my the cloudiness. I want a little bit of action. I'm, I'm moving the line um, to more or less match the darks and lights of the undertone. Also when I dip my brush I'm wiping off uh, a lot of the glaze. I don't want a real fat line um, that I'll have to deal with later. I want something kind of medium thick, uh, but with just enough glaze on the surface that I can manipulate it with the chip brush, which we'll do in a minute. Now, it's pretty wavy through here. Uh, that's okay. My my um, cloudiness supports that there. I'm Like I said, I'm trying to follow the darks and lights. So that's, that's my chip brush, dampened and shaken out, and I'm stretching some graininess into the grain line, the, the bristles of that brush will will make some little parallel lines and that's a very realistic look. Doing some touch up with the damp sponge, always a valuable tool. And just continuing with um, touch up and adding a few more grain lines. I don't want perfect spacing between my lines and since it's maple the lines don't have to follow each other in perfect parallel, um, especially a, a a very active curly type maple like this the lines often kind of do their own thing which is unique by the way to maple and, and woods like it um, and again just working down the box I've got some spacing between the lines but not perfect following the undulations of color in the undertone and then on my for my leading edge here my grain line is going to drop on and off of the, this edge. You can imagine if that piece of wood had been cut with a saw, that last line wouldn't magically follow the straight edge along the bottom. And that's an opportunity to create, to add some realism um, and something to look out for. It would be real easy to just pull that line straight across the, the bottom of the box because that edge is straight, but that's not how wood works. Um, and then making a final touch up with my with my damp sponge making a little change to a couple of grain lines there and finishing it off with my damp spalter and making final touch up let's move on to grain lines for the sides of the box what's up world let's get it popping with cc mixer it's your boy jeff williams word Composure on the inside, ulcer on the outside. Footsteps tap cool. Thank you. 
vulgarité, loser un jour, loser toujours, oublie la dragouille, tes blagues, laisse tomber la frime et tes jeux de nuit me retournent, j'ai dit la merde.